How's everybody doing tonight? This is Chopping It Up Hardcore with Hal Capone, episode number 44. Tonight I have a very special guest. Tonight I'm speaking with John Severson of the Juggernaut Band Daughters. Uh, he was also in As the Sunsets, Crippler Crossface, Cast Off Skin, um, some other bands that we'll get into too. So uh, super stoked to talk to him. Can't wait to talk to him. Um, just want to give a shout out to Cliff Parade Records, Levi from Screamo Index, his page. He started up a record label uh, called Cliff Parade. So um, show some love. Go over there. They're putting out a four-way split, a crushing four-way split on vinyl that looks fucking amazing. So go over there. Show some love. Buy a shirt. Buy a record. Um, support small business, man. Uh, he reposts a lot of my shit. Shows love. I try to give him love back. Uh, just a great guy in general. So... Um, Hope everybody's doing good. It's uh, hot as shit in New Hampshire. Uh, this week's going to get like 85, so uh, I don't think spring, I think spring's gone. I think summer's here, but uh, I'm still <laughs> dealing with allergies like crazy. All right, John, I'm uh, going to link up with you right now. John, how you doing? Hey, man, I'm good. Can you hear me all right? Uh, I, it's a little soft. Uh, let's see if we can do something about that. Is it any better? Yeah, I, I can hear you. All right. Hi. Hey, what's going on, man? Just, uh, living in Groundhog's Day over here, basically. <laughs> yeah, and, I know. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Let me see if I can, uh, hold on. Ugh. So I was just checking it. You said it's hot as balls in, uh, New Hampshire? Yeah, it's, it, it, it almost hit 80 degrees today, so uh, it's it, for a while it was only like, I think the highest it got was maybe 70 one day, and then, but uh, the next week it's going to be 85 on Wednesday, so I, I think spring's gone up in New England, honestly. Yeah. I mean, it's 84 in Austin right now, but that's kind of normal. It's a, it's a dry heat out there, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah, I... Uh... It's been uh, the last time I talked to somebody from New England was the last time I heard that I believe. But yeah, it's it's a dry heat. I don't think I ever understood that. But uh, yeah. uh, well, I guess that what what that means is like it's not humid. It's humid as fuck as it usually gets like in the summer in New England. It gets like super humid up around here. Yeah, it gets gross. I remember that. Um, yeah, it's uh, it can be a hundred here and it's not that brutal. Um, I want to thank you so much for taking time out and talking to me. Um, I know Sundays sometimes people are, you know, have, have me days on Sunday or you have a family. Like I have a family and I, I get to take this little time out to do my thing every Sunday. Um, so I appreciate you taking the time out to, to talk to me for a little while about the, yeah. old days, the old days and the new days. Yeah, well, look, man, I've got nothing going on right now. So uh, we can act like I've got a busy schedule that I broke away from, but. No, man, this is a pleasure. Um, so let's talk. Yes, yes, let's get into it. Usually, usually the first thing I ask when I when I do these discussions is what what got you into uh, punk and hardcore? Were you listening to other stuff when you were younger, say like metal or or classic rock or I mean, shit, were you listening to disco when you were young? <laughs> I mean, um, I'm sure that disco or whatever was on the radio in the eighties was pumped into my brain, but, um, I'm not really sure what got me into it. You know, a combination of like the cooler skater kids down the street or, um, whatever, but I gravitated towards it. You know, it's also kind of like quickly, uh, a place where all the, the weirdos could go and kind of have a place to, uh, I don't know, hang out, not get judged by the world. But um, yeah, man, I always liked the uh, the faster, crazier music. But I came from um, Rentham, Massachusetts, which is like a suburb, you know. So we didn't. I think uh, the next town over had a head shop, like shop that you could get bongs, and um, they had a bunch of bootleg tapes and stuff. So you could uh, you could get all that there. But that was about it. There were no real zines kicking around or anything like that for a while. So it was pretty it was pretty hard to get. Um, get stuff that wasn't immediately available on MTV or something, you know, yeah. took a bit to scratch the surface. I know I used to, I used to, um, there was no record, comp uh, like 
stores around in New Hampshire because I, I, w- I was living in New Hampshire most of my life. I lived in Massachusetts for a while. I lived in Haverhill for years. Uh, but for the most part, I lived in New Hampshire and there was no record stores anywhere. So I basically had to go to Newberry Comics and there was only two Newberry Comics at the time. It was one in Harvard Square and one on Newbury Street. So like that's an hour and I mean the Harvard Square one was like an hour and 15 minutes away from me. So I would have to beg somebody to drive me there just so that I could get, you know, the newest punk or the newest hardcore album that that was uh, coming out. So it was a struggle for me to get stuff like when I was younger. Yeah, sure, sure. It made it cool though, you know, because when you'd find something, it was almost like currency. Everybody on the block would uh, record that tape real quick and yeah, that was cool, man. Yeah, I remember WERS was a big thing for me. I could barely get it where I was in New Hampshire, so I would try to record, uh, what was it, Nasty Habits or yes, something yeah. like that. Yeah. And, um, I'd re- record that, and I'd try to listen to I, – I was hoping that at the end of, like, a block, they would say, like, the band's names and shit like that so that I could look up stuff back then, too. Yeah, man, that was huge for us. Um You've talked to Lex and stuff, so um, you might have heard these stories, but I can remember me and Lex, like, in my basement when I was maybe 14 or, f- no, probably 15 or so, but uh, waiting for that to come on and taping it and just kind of living off that all week and going through it and shit. Um, yeah, that was a good way to get figure out the concert calendar on Nasty Habits. Like, that shit was, like, you know, the only way you would figure out how a show's coming up. Or sitting on the line, uh, the answering machine of, for the living room in Providence. Just uh, letting that guy rattle off the entire concert calendar. Yeah, that's how that shit used to work. But, um, man, I don't know. Uh, nasty Habits, I can't think of anything. You would have to go to a show to find a zine. So it was really tough locally trying to figure out what's going on. There was, like, one hardcore band from the town over from us. And it was the first band I ever heard refer to themselves as a hardcore band. Um, but that was when I probably like 14. It's the first time I crossed paths with that. I always knew what punk was. I always like had cool uncles that got me turned on to like Black Flag and Black Sabbaths and stuff like that when I was a kid. But I never really sought it out until I was about junior high-ish, I guess. Yeah. And so what bands kind of hooked you when you first um, started getting into that hardcore scene? Obviously back then in the, in the you know, early 90s, mid 90s, it was, it was metalcore-ish, like tough guy-ish mosh pits like going on for the most part you know uh, sure sure i you know it, well coming from rentham i didn't really know the difference when i first heard like heavy was heavy you know what i mean and i didn't know the term hardcore or all the special terms you're supposed to know and what you're not supposed to like and what you are supposed to like you know there was a lot of fucking rules <laughs> but um <laughs> yeah. so um you know just just that was just kind of what i got from watching uh you know, what was it, 120 minutes or whatever the hell was available to us. Yeah. Uh, Nasty Habits kind of helped break it down, but even still, you would you would get entombed corn and 25 to life, you know, it kind of, oh, that's all heavy music, I guess, you know. Yeah. But uh, wear a corn shirt to a Madball show and see what happens to you back in those days. It <laughs> might get kind of funny. But, um, yeah, I mean, so the first couple bands I gravitated to, I think there was uh, one of the older, cooler kids in this high school that I went to. He, uh, we went to see Blank 77, and The Unseen opened. And I had never seen kids kind of my age just shred, but kind of like, I don't want to, you know, talk shit on those guys, but, you know, kind of a similar ability of to what I could do with a guitar, you know? Yeah. Couldn't really do shit at that age. Yeah. Um, just watching them just own it and fucking crush. I was like, holy fuck, because they're my age. The first time I saw kids my age on a punk stage, I guess. And there was a lot of punk shit coming out of Boston, like Middle East downstairs and shit like that. So that would have been like 95-ish, hopping the train in Norfolk or Franklin, Mass, and going into Boston and checking that out. Yeah. And just seeing zines, checking out the concert calendar once you get down there and figuring out what you want to see. And There was like maybe one or two kids locally that really knew – what hard the hardcore scene was you know so um you you ever go to those lupos like sunday matinee things yeah, that'd be yeah. all day long oh yes yeah. yeah, so it, was, it was confusing because it'd be like a, a lot of rap core bands mixed in like stained opened up a few of them really? I remember that was, <laughs> yeah i missed that one <laughs> yeah that would be all day it'd be cool but like it just like i was really young then i think you know asking our friends parents to drive us down there and uh 
it was rad, but it took me a while to figure out what kind of music was what. But um, so in a way, I kind of just dug all heavy music, and I still don't really judge it. Like it doesn't have to be hardcore for me to be into it. Yeah, yeah. Those those rules are kind of over my head and whatever, man. If you yeah, exist I mean, by them, sure, go for it. But yeah, I mean, I didn't really have rules. It was just kind of like the thing that I was exposed to. So I was kind of like a a heavy metal kid. Then then like obviously I found thrash metal. And then, and then it was kind of like the the metal hardcore ish stuff that was happening mid '90s for me. And then, and then once I saw stuff like um, I saw like Satya, uh for the first time, and it kind of like got my mind open to other things. And then, like you, I was I liked everything. You know what I mean? I liked death metal. I liked you know the regular hardcore. Um, you know, straight edge, um, screamo stuff, I, which I can't stand that term, but you know what I mean. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There was a lot going on and there was always bands doing, you know, this or that around. It seemed like that, at least when I was, you know, 15 to like 20. There was a lot of a lot of things happening, playing shows. Bands wouldn't put out a seven inch and felt like just launch a tour. But I loved that because you'd always be able to catch a show. Yeah, definitely. Like um, I, uh, you know, I've, I've worked at a bunch of clubs kind of, I guess, in the past couple of years. And one thing I don't see anymore, which I used to love was just a line of kids giving you flyers as you leave the club. And um, yeah, that would just be like, just waiting for it. You know, there's yeah. no Facebook group or any of that bullshit. You just, you drive there. Hopefully it hasn't been canceled, you know, and there you are. Enjoy yourself or whatever. Yeah. The same yeah. thing with record stores. You used to see like a, a bulletin board. Covered yeah. yeah. With flyers. And I'd always yeah. try to steal them to, just so that I, I didn't forget where it was or stuff like that. Um, speaking of shows, uh, I, this is like a random bullshit story, but um, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I got time, man. I set up a show with as the sunsets. I tried to. This is like, okay. This is like, and um, back then, I think maybe you guys put out seventy seven forty four or whatever. It was around that time, and I wrote you a letter <laughs> to get you to play at a oh, show. Oh shit! Uh, so an actual letter, like uh, you the, you mailed yeah, us a letter. Yeah, that was my rules. means uh, internet wasn't like a thing at my Yeah, house. totally. Yeah. Um, so I wrote you a letter. And <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It, which is funny because you, you guys initially said yes. And then uh, for some reason you bailed out. out. How did we respond? Did we write you re back you to you? You did respond. I remember correctly. Was it me out. or do you it remember who it was? It was <laughs> yeah, it was you. <laughs> um, and you said like, yeah, we're down for that. Um, and I had no, I had met you when like I saw cast off skin way back in the day and I was friends with the Ookla Lamar kids and the fall kids. I was always around those guys, at, you know, all the time. So I had talked to you, you know, back in the day at shows here and there. And, um, I think you back then you had remembered like seeing me or whatever. And you were like, yeah, man, that's cool. Like we could, you know, we'd like to play that show. And, uh, it, and I was like, in the letter, I was like, yeah, maybe we could hang out or whatever. And you and I remember distinctly, you were like, yeah, me and Lex hang out in my basement. We watch like old, old, old shitty horror movies. Uh, yeah, you know, if you're ever yeah. around, come on down. <laughs> watch some, uh, old shitty horror movies. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like me. Uh, <laughs> so that's, it, it, that's a trip, I still man. have the flyer that like, uh, this is the flyer. It was As the Sun Sets, Backstabbers, and then my old band, and then Rosenthal, and, and, and another band. Wow. Wow. So do you, do you know what, um, I'm trying, I'd love to figure out what, like, phase of my band that was in. Like, what was the year, do you think? I think it was, like, 2002, I think. Hmm. Yeah, so that would have been the end. Yeah, things are really messy. <laughs> we were pretty flaky at the end there, man. So, yeah, sorry about that. But Oh, that's all right. It was just, like I said, it was a shitty story, but, you know, I just... No, it's funny, man. It's funny that I, I was writing letters to people to try and uh, set up shows back in the day. No, I love that. I, I mean, if I... Re, trying to remember how we used to get through tours. Lots of stops at uh, Kinko's to answer emails, get directions, um... One of our guys had the cell phone, and we had to wait until like eight o'clock for the the plan to become free or whatever it was after eight p.m. to yeah. make the calls. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man, it was. I mean, it seems like a nightmare, but I I I liked it better in some ways that way. It just felt like I wasn't as bothered. I think like all the shows that I did, I it was either AOL Messenger hoping they had a you know a, a name on AOL, or it was just straight up letters of all the shows that I, I set up back then. Right on, yeah. 
Yeah, that's a trip, man. That's, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> the struggle yeah, that, was that, real back then. That world is gone. I can remember driving out to shows and there being like a notice on the door saying the show got canceled. If you were lucky, you got moved. But usually, I remember Daughters was on tour, the first tour we ever did. And uh, I remember getting out and going to the door, the address. There was nobody around. But you could hear a band playing in the distance. So I'm like, well, it got to be close. That's weird. And it just said, like, it's been moved to this new address. So plug that into the GPS, got over to it. It was like a dirt uh, driveway in the back of some building. <laughs> And it wasn't flat because I remember hitting my cymbals and they both fell forward because I was like kind of facing down the driveway. And we just wanted to play the show and hopefully get enough from T-shirts or whatever to make gas money to keep going. Yeah. But I just remember it was so hard to take the show seriously because it just it was just in somebody's driveway and it was the worst thing <laughs> ever. But. Yeah, yeah that, that was like MapQuest. I, I never had a GPS, so I was always, I'd get MapQuest uh, directions and try to mm -hmm. read them while I was driving, which was a fucking nightmare, too. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I went to Providence one time with my buddy Brian, and we went to see Lightning Bolt, and um, it was uh, the next day. So we drove all the way down to Providence, and it, the show wasn't there. Uh, and all of a sudden, it was like, oh, it got moved to, to you know, the start of your musical career and stuff like that. Uh, what what drew you to drums? And I know you played guitar as well. So what came first? We do you kind of tinker on guitar first, or do, were you straight? Like, yeah, here. Check, what's that? Check it out. All right. So this bastard here, I I just reobtained this. This is a guitar my uncles gave me when I turned twelve or thirteen, and that was uh, that was all I needed to get going, I guess. So I got that bastard, and then the kid that I hung out with down the street got his guitar. Um, I want to say, uh, probably a year later, we decided if we're going to be in a band, somebody's got to play drums and it probably came down to like a wrestling match or something. And, uh, I might look powerful, but he was much more powerful. So I think I had to submit and play the drums, but that worked out for me, I guess. Yeah. Now, now when you first got into that, were you, were you, was it, you know, were you kind of like, nah, I don't really want to, or were you like, fuck it, I'll just... I, I don't really remember having an issue with it. It was just whatever it takes to get this band thing going, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't remember it being a big deal. But um, it was, you know, it was a pleasure because I, I kind of just wanted to be in a band to, I don't know, kind of yell at people <laughs> I had problems with in my young life. So. Now, was now was the, what was your first band that you played in? Um, well... We never really settled with a name, but we used to we used to come up with names for demos we put out. And I'm album like 13, 14 at this time. And um, we were real into uh, punk rock shit. So we thought we came up with this amazing punk rock name. But it was uh, Stuart's Rod. <laughs> Ta -da. Yeah, we just, uh, I think we knew like four songs. We tried to cover Minor Threat. Didn't work out too good. Tried to cover some Black Flag stuff. Didn't work out too good. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, shit, I was 13 or 14. That's all it took to yeah. keep me addicted for the rest of my life, I guess. Yeah. Now, now, where did you, how did you and Lex meet up? Because I know you've got been friends forever. You've been in and out of, like, bands. I know you guys were in Cast Off Skin, um, obviously, as the Sunsets, Daughters, and, and you're playing on the, the new um, Lex album as well. Uh, how did you guys meet, and, and did you know when you met him that, you know, you were going to have a, you know, pretty much a lifelong friendship. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, I, I mean, I might misremember this, but in my mind, I remember I transferred into his high school, but when I transferred in there, I didn't meet him for a while because he was suspended. You know, like he was, uh, but I remember people telling me, you all, you know, I was one of maybe four or five kids that listened to metal or hardcore or whatever. And so people I was meeting would be like, oh, you'll love Lex. And I remember thinking, what the hell is a Lex? And I eventually met him. And yeah, I, I feel like we hit it off pretty well. Um, and I remember him saying he was singing in a band. And I was playing drums in my, you know, my buddy's band. And um, we eventually just put it together. That's it. And I remember talking to some kids about 
starting up a new thing and on the drive to our first practice we were going to drive by lex's house and it's like let's stop in and see if he's there and we just picked him up and that was it and i've been playing music with him since that day he uh lex just said he saved your life in a hallway fight that's right yeah some kid named <laughs> some kid named chris beans uh tripped me and before i could get up i i heard this like guy like fucking with john and you know there was lex yeah so yeah and so that that kind of turned into cast off skin or did you guys do something before then we had a short-lived thing before then which is kind of like um a hybrid of everything we thought was heavy music and um in my mind it felt like we we're in that band for years but i think we just kind of grew and learned what we wanted or what we didn't want it was only like two or th two or three month period and um What's great is uh, the band was supposed to be called Displaced. And I think it was a, right around the time I got my driver's license. So I'm 16-ish. And uh, the guy that was in the band was also like designing the logo and stuff. And he spelt the band name wrong. So it's really, if you look at it and read it, it's Displacid. So uh, <laughs> we, uh, yeah, he spelt the band name wrong and the, the only sticker or logo that it seemed like we had, so. We were in a band that some might say was called Displacid for a second. And then we linked up with these other guys that played metal in the town next over that Lex had. Got going. I lost him for a sec. Should be back on. Hold on. Oh, there you are. Lost your first. Hey. Oh, no. You're back on though now. I, I lost you for a second. All right, cool. Well, sorry about that. Well, yeah, so where, where was I? Uh, disc placard. <laughs> and then you met some, <laughs> and then you met some uh, metal guys. <laughs> so Lex was playing with these other guys uh, that lived a couple towns over. And, uh, yeah, we just ended up, me and Lex ended up playing with them and started Cast Off Skin. That was only a band, I want to say, for a few months before we, we just kept growing and deciding we wanted to be something different every like it took about four or five songs and then we wanted to be a new band you know it's just kind of we're absorbing everything around us super fast and just changing really fast so and it, it feel like i was probably about 16 17 at that time now were you influenced by any bands when you were in cast off skin i know lex always always talks about ukla the mock when when he saw oh, yeah, guys play yeah. live um or, or Fault was kind of, you know, Chris Flanagan would always do backflips. and <laughs> Yeah, there, I mean, we always got fortunate. And, like, there was a lot of really cool bands going on in the area. Um, I mean, I feel like one of the first shows we got, and there was probably, like, 12 people there, was with a Providence band called At Me Cost. And I was 18, 19 or something, and they blew me away. I remember... Cast Off Skin was getting shows at that club in Brockton, 121. And it only took us a couple times of playing there to realize, like, this kind of isn't our scene, this kind of isn't our vibe. And then Ukul the Mock, I think, played there. That might be where we saw them. Yeah. And they scared the shit out of me. That, I'd never really seen anyone do that. And, uh, yeah, I remember that was crazy. We had to try to get as many shows with them as we could. But um, I also remember being in that club, looking around, and it was just really our band that really dug what they were doing. So it was just like, well, we got to figure out where they play and play here less <laughs> and just figure out who they play with and shit because, you know, they were a little older than us. But, yeah, they were crazy. Was, didn't the bass player, didn't he have his father on tour with them or something like that? And, like, yeah, he, they, did, they did a uh, – they went all the way to California, and I think uh, two of the dads went because I, I think the, the bass player and the other guitar player were only 15 at the time. That's and, so rad. <laughs> yeah, I so they that. had they had two dads on tour, and Adam and Max were obviously older and stuff like that. So, uh, but th those guys were crazy. They'd always beat the shit out of each other on stage, and, and Pete <laughs> would always, you know, he's always hitting something with the guitar. So it was scary, man. Yeah, and then we, I feel like we saw they were they would tell us about Fault, and we eventually got to see Fault, and Fault was just as scary, and it was it was rad. We would try to get them as many shows as we can in Providence because we kind of. We somehow got like rain of that club, the living room. Like we would get like we would get like a Wednesday or a Sunday, but we would stack it with all the bands that would 
uh, play with us. And we always had a headliner drop off or maybe not even really confirm. We might have just baked the flyer a little bit, you know? Yeah. And then we always had to always headline. So, you know, 12 bands and then us. And yeah, it was it was fun, though, man. Um, I remember. I remember doing uh, Fault, Ukula the Mock. Uh, Day After from Providence was a band we used to do a lot of stuff with. Uh, there was a band called Nowhere Fast. I don't know if any of that rings any bells, but yeah, that's kind of who uh, I want to say we started playing with when we were doing the Cast Off Skin to As the Sunsets jump. Yeah, I remember seeing Cast Off Skin. I saw you guys once, and then I saw As the Sunsets like a, a bunch of times, uh, only because I like... Uh, I was always drawn to like as the sunsets and there was a cool band uh, as I bleed that was yeah, uh, playing yeah. around too that kind of those guys kind of turned into back those are the brothers right those two brothers in that band yeah I remember them okay yeah shit and and also the Connecticut bands like Dead Eyes Under and Die My Will back then um, th th that's, that's right the, like between shit. you guys and like Ukla and Fault and Die My Will and, and Dead Eyes Under and all those bands. It was such a great scene back then. And uh, there was shows, like you said, every single weekend or if, yeah. the, if not two shows every single weekend. Yeah, I found um, my mother saved like a calendar and a folder of all the flyers we had. So I had a I had a calendar that I wrote down all our shows that year to keep track of it. And my mom saved it and I found it. We literally played, I think, uh, May, June and July. We played the living room every single Sunday, <laughs> which is... Uh, <laughs> A little intense but you know whatever we're the house band i guess for a second there yeah. but uh yeah yeah that was cool but there were so many shows man and in such a small area and yeah. um i don't know maybe that could happen because there was no real internet then or yeah. it wasn't the Let same new, way it is new, now yeah new england was definitely hopping lex said life passed on the guys from as i bleed uh started life that's passed right on that's right afterwards and then and then that turned into backstabbers that's right Damn. But uh, I like when as the sunset started, I know like, um, you know, Lex told me, he w you know, he doesn't love the first album you guys put out. Uh, I love it. Everybody it talks to love it. Love it. Um, it. What's what's your take on the first album? The each individual voice is dead in the silence. I like to me, I fucking love it. The drumming is amazing. That's what drew me towards you guys so much is that album is just so classic to me. Um, I just want to know your take on that album. I mean, those were like, yeah, those were, that was As the Sunsets uh, first attempts at writing music under the name As the Sunsets. I, I, I look, listen back and I hear a band on its way to its identity. You know, we, we hadn't stumbled across it yet. Um, the record's cool for what it is. Um, I don't know. I just hear a, a, us being young and trying to figure out what we want to do. And, uh, it was pretty funny when we did the next record and how fucked up people were by it. But, <laughs> you know, mostly, mostly bad reviews. It's one of those things where years later people tell me, you know what, that was actually cool. I'm like, Whatever, man. Uh, at the time we did that record, I remember getting a little bit about, like, people didn't dig that record as they liked our earlier stuff. Like, the thing with the bands I've always done with Lex is we did Cast Off Skin. People dug that. But then we did As the Sunsets, and they wanted cast off skin. Yeah. The first As the Sunset stuff were like these demos we did, just real metal y kind of overcast, Worcester-influenced kind of stuff, you know? Uh, so when we did the CD, uh, each individual voice, that was a different batch of songs than what was on the demo, so people were kind of wanting the demo. I'm always hearing what we're doing wrong. It was kind of yeah. funny at that time. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's just me are us young that's all i really hear with that one yeah. um, and you, you guys did you guys do two demos though because i know there yeah. was a like there was one tape that had a kid jumping uh on the cover and then there was another demo that had i forget it had a, a, like maybe one more song than the kid jumping uh, all right. it was like a kid jumping and kind of putting his hands up like this on the cover of it i remember we, that uh, well we had two actual demos and then we tried to do this like the cd was recorded and i think we wanted to kind of release a cassette single sort of thing yeah. and because we were going to kinko's to make all our layouts i think we just made a bunch of different layouts or layout i don't know <laughs> yeah we made a bunch of different whatever copies and um yeah. 
I think uh, we probably got bored doing the high speed dub thing by ourselves all the time. So some of those tapes might be unique. Some of them we might have accidentally leaked the whole CD. But yeah, so we had the CD. Um, we just took like two songs or something and uh, tried to sell it at one or two shows until the CD was out. I can't. I think I remember that correctly. I could be lying to you about all this too. You know, I misremember shit all the time, man. So. So, so what kind of change? I mean, obviously the first album had longer songs. The you know you'd have like a four minute song, and then years later you guys kind of shortened it up. What was the mindset of like kind of shortening your songs and just being like you know quick and fast and and brutal? Uh, what was the, what did you guys have for a mindset changing it up like that? It's hard to say, man. That was a while ago at this point. I just think we uh, we hadn't yet settled uh, our sound. You know, like we did the As the Sunset stuff. Like we maybe wrote another song that was similar to that first record after that. And then we just kept going the weird, the next way we went for those last two records. Yeah. I can't remember why we we're, in, you know, doing that. But I, I remember like we were just kind of over that first sound. We uh we could it wouldn't sustain us it wouldn't keep us happy you know so I think the only way to the only way to resume being that band as far as me and Lex were concerned was we had to change it up a little bit and yeah I don't know that's uh a, a, kind of what I remember I remember it being kind of frustrating you know yeah uh, some of the guys no, in the no, band did, did people some, kind of like not like it at first because I liked it. Honestly, to me, I, I yeah, I'm I, sure. I, yeah, I'm sure. The the thing is, like, I never really received a lot of praise in that band ever. So we weren't. Tr I don't remember uh, trying to keep people happy or keep nobody happy. Like, I don't remember that being uh, a reason for you know why the music was the way it was. If anything, it'd be more obvious to, that we're making people uh, un, unhappy by the changes we were making. But uh, yeah, I mean, somebody always had something to say there. Everybody was in a band in those days. It felt like too, you know, or everyone's in multiple bands and um, yeah, no matter what, somebody's always doing this or that and telling you about it and telling what you, what you're doing wrong. Cause it's, it's new England, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think one of the last shows that you guys played as a, as the Sunsets, well, before I think the tour or whatever it was, do you remember playing Fuck Fest at the New Bedford, Massachusetts um, Fest? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that was, was kind of like the last time. I think that was the last time that I saw, well, maybe not. I, thought, I recorded you guys playing at um, Tufts with Wolves, too. So I, I get confused. I think the fuck fest was before and then that was like one of the last shows i saw when you guys played wolves uh at tufts that video that, that might I have been our last boston show i want to say i'm guessing though um yeah i remember the fuck fest that was exciting especially something like that happening in new bedford of all places like maybe i'm misremembering new bedford massachusetts but it was never a, really a hotbed of uh really cool bands all coming into the area so uh, yeah, Fuck Fest was great, though. I remember being kind of intimidated because there was just all, so many cool, rad bands that never came to the area to play, at least to my knowledge. Yeah, you. I, I remember you guys played the first first day with uh, Books Lie and uh, Trillion Barnacle Apps, and that was the the show that they were still fast and like chaotic before they turned into kind of like the um, you know the electronica stuff that they they had branched out and stuff. yeah yeah well they were another band that was changing pretty rapidly as well so i don't know it was just something in the water but uh yeah i i i in, can't remember who played that day i remember the i remember neil perry played right maybe yep. Jo yep. joshua fit for battle played yeah was it uh you serve synops had the cheerleader <laughs> with them yeah <laughs> but uh yeah i mean shit if you think about it that was a really small area right yeah. In VFW thing. So I, I, I remember not being able to really stand anywhere besides standing on my drums in the back. So I'm watching the show while standing on a drum on drums behind drums. But no, that was cool. There was also the Tin Can Pull of Dreams Fest that happened. Yes. A few times. Like those were cool. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, Pete always Pete always hooked up uh great shows when the when those fests happen and for a great cause too as well. Um I remember I, I only got to see two of them. I missed like the other two. I missed the first one. The first one I think had Reversal of Man and, and 
um, I think combat played. And then the second yep. year I went, I missed the third year. And then I went to the last, the last one that had, uh, it was like one of Orchid's last shows that they played at, at that. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. That, was that, and that was in Providence. Um, the, the last uh, tin can fest. Yeah. I remember there was one in a VFW in North Providence and then one at the hive. And yeah, it was like, um, what's the, what's the place? Mohasset Mills. Is that what it's called? Monahasset Mills. I think it was at the hive, but it could have been Monahasset Mills. I'm not sure. Monahasset Mills Monahasset. was, Monahasset was by Fort Thunder. I think that's where it was. Honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been a bit, man. Yeah, definitely. Those, those, those fests were like amazing back then. Um, so speaking of daughters, uh, when you guys transitioned into daughters, um, and you got, and you got Nick, you met Nick, and he got into the fold. Um, were you guys, you guys knew each other beforehand? I know Who, Nick, Nick? a few other like metalcore bands and. Um, yeah, man, we met Nick. Yeah, we met Nick years before we started doing daughters together with him. Um, he was a few years younger, you know, he might've been like 15 when we met him, but we might've been 17 or 18, something like that. But yeah, Nick was always playing in bands and his, he was in, um, Barnacle, an early version of Barnacle Collapse as well. I think when they were called Tomorrow's Will, but they were, uh, yeah, he was always part of bands that were kind of changing. Every new band was a big leap from the last sound. So I guess we have that in common. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah, he was doing a bunch of bands, and he was just like a go-to guitar player. So, Lex says he's still fifteen. He looks like he's still fifteen. <laughs> yeah, like, he's... Nick, Nick doesn't age at all. Every time I no, him, yeah, like, Jesus Christ, he doesn't. I mean, that being said, Lex, you guys don't age either because shit, I'm almost fifty, and you guys look almost the same as when I first met you guys. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I could feel it in my back, man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I feel I feel you there too. I'm, uh, I don't know. Once once forty like mid forties hit, everything started going wrong. <laughs> well, I'm I'm there now, so yeah, I'll keep you updated. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Let you know how it feels. Um, so shit, yeah. So the As the Sunsets thing, I can remember we did the last tour and we decided like we were not getting on well and musically it was just like not happening. So, uh, uh. Jeremy was playing bass and as the sunsets, he became the daughter's guitar player. We just decided like we, we wanted to stop as the sunsets. And um, I think one of the biggest things that drives me insane was the last, uh, the 8949 layout. Basically, it said something like, uh, we start anew as daughters. That wasn't true. I don't even think a guy in the band did that. I think the guy doing the layout put that in there. And I remember seeing it after the layout was already printed and the record was out and being kind of, that's a bummer. Yeah, <laughs> it's not, yeah, really, because it's not really what it is, but uh, yeah. So, you know, that didn't really, plus it wasn't really fair uh, for the other members of that band <laughs> to re to look in the layout and see that. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I, re I remember reading that too on uh I think Discog says that too. You, it was just like, oh, they yeah. just decided to change their name to Daughters. Like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a bummer. That's not really how it went down, honestly. But what can you do? There it is. Yeah, I, I yeah, lost you. Obviously, having a, a hold on, he'll be back in a second. You're swirling. Am I swirling? Oh, there you are. Hey, here we go. What happened? I don't know. But was mine swirling too? Like, yeah, uh, yeah, buffering? yeah. Yeah. Technology, right. man. <laughs> I, every every discussion, I always have a fuck up so somewhere. Um, <laughs> but me, meeting Pat too, obviously, and having him play in in the first um, daughters stuff. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Pat Pat lived around the corner from us, and you know we knew him from what was it Bastion and Force Fed Glass, just Cape Cod stuff. So. He was easy go to when we we're trying to come up with folks to uh to do the band. Yeah, I, I heard uh, like there's talk of him just not knowing how to play bass, and you guys kind of just forced him into it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I can't remember honestly. Uh, Pat had the biggest living room, and it could fit all of us, and we could get drunk in there. And that's where we made a lot of decisions those days. <laughs> so yeah, that's probably left there one day and had a new band yeah. going. But yeah. Not just, uh, 
now does it amaze you that Canada songs is still like talked about so much and everybody loves Canada songs and then you and there's a repress of the record it's and, still and surreal all, all man this, all this great stuff about Canada songs yeah it's still surreal because uh I, in a way, I felt like as the sunsets, we tried it. We really tried to make that band like a purposeful metal or whatever sort of band. Uh, Daughters to us was kind of like, you know, this is kind of more antagonistic. And if it's if it doesn't go as well, that's all right because I I want that pressure off me. So um, yeah, uh, it's it's bizarre because it's how how long? Eleven minutes, right? And yeah, uh, yeah. I can't do the math, but how old is it now? 2003 it came out? 2003, yeah. yeah 2003. So the fact that people still want to buy that thing if we repress it does kind of confuse me. But cool. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, when I heard it, it, obviously I went and tried to see you guys as much as possible. I recorded, I don't even know how many, how many uh, shows at that time, like between 2002 and 2003. Yeah. I try, every time you guys were in New England, I tried to go and and, and record it. Um, so I, to me, I love that album. Do you get sick of people asking you? I know I know you guys don't um, play it live. Do you get sick of people asking you, "Hey, play songs from Canada songs"? You know what I mean? Um, not really, but it, it, I mean, I suppose we could just do the whole record and be like a ten-minute song, right? Just bang it all out, no no pauses. It's just like that's just such old um, music to us, and uh, I don't really get sick of it, you know. Uh, it's just I might not do it. <laughs> it's um, I don't know. I like the new stuff. It mm. I don't I don't really want to rehearse the old stuff. I want to focus on the new stuff. We already play like an hour, yeah. Or when we used to play, um, no, it doesn't bother me, but. Uh, Yeah, do you hear it a lot though? People asking. Um, I gotta tell you, man. Last time I played a show was 2019. At this point, so uh, probably, <laughs> I, I, you know, there there are a lot of people that uh, stuck around for some reason. So it's it's cool to see that. But uh, yeah, people do remember the the early stuff, so that's really cool. Yeah. And, and I always say people were kind of dr like taken back by Lex's vocals when um, Hell Songs came out. Um, mm. I, I like I told Lex too. At first, I, I didn't really understand it, and then after I really delved into the album, I I really started to enjoy it. But at first, my first initial listen, I was like, "Whoa!" Like this is Daughters. I, I was like kind of confused by it. And um, obviously, a band has to evolve, and you don't want to scream for, you know, 20 years doing the same shit over and over again. I, I totally understand the evolution and the maturity of the music and stuff like that. Um, but was there, like, kickback from people that said, like, you know, this is different. This isn't like the daughters I knew. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I vaguely remember people just being like, what the fuck? I, people thought it was a joke. People thought we literally released a joke record for some reason. I can remember that. Um, so w what was interesting is the bands that we chose to tour with at that time um, were all instrumental bands. And they were kind of like really uh, weird for us to be playing with. So we kind of got launched into like a whole new, uh, uh, what do I want to say, audience? the first couple tours when hell songs came out yeah. so we weren't really like going um into spots to seeing our canada songs fans or people that knew us for canada songs weren't necessarily what was making up a majority of the crowd at those times yeah but uh so i remember one of the first tours we did was with um with pelican and i remember seeing it in print somewhere that um it was it was just somebody talking shit about the new vocals and some, somebody saying something about how we need Pelican singer. And for those who don't know, Pelican is an instrumental band. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, people were confused, you know, but um, I don't know. I liked it. It was cool. Yeah, definitely. I, like I said, at first I, I was kind of confused by it, but then 
when I really started to listen to it, it, it really like resonated with me. And then from then on, I was I was really interested in like le what Lex was doing vocally um, as you went on to the self title. And, and um, you know, obviously there was a huge break in between self title and you won't get what you want. But um, I, I really enjoyed Lex's vocals now. And, and if anything, he by far to me, is my favorite frontman of any punk, hardcore, whatever you guys want to call the music you guys are doing. I hate uh, genres as well. Um, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I worked in a record store long enough to know they're important to sell things, you know. And um, but that brings up a good point. What would you call daughters? What's the genre? I don't care, but what would you call it? Because you just yeah. called it like five to eight different things. So, yeah, uh, who cares? Who yeah, cares? I mean, it, it's it's just fucking good music to me. You know what I mean? And that's all I care about. Um, I I can't stand gen genres that much. Like I said, I didn't even hear the word screamo until after those big like Godfathers of screamo had already like disbanded. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even yeah. hear that, and then all of a sudden everybody's saying Orchid and Sasha and you and I and all these bands are, are screamo. I, back then, they were just hardcore bands to me. They were punk hardcore bands. And yeah, yeah, that's how I kind of choose to see them, too. Like, I, I probably use the word punk as a blanket term for a bunch of stuff that's not necessarily punk, but I don't know. I prefer to keep it simpler like that. And it probably confuses and makes some people pretty frustrated. But, I mean, yeah, I would say, I would tell somebody, like, oh, Daughters is a punk band. If they're asking me, like, if I'm traveling through an airport, I usually have, like, symbols or something with me that, you know, makes me look like I'm in a band. Like, what kind of band? What kind of music you play? Right there, I'm just like, uh, post-noise, core, rock, metal, you know, like, I, I don't want to fuck with that shit, so I'll just say a punk band or something. Yeah. And I always ask this, too. Uh, have you, one, have you heard the word scrams? And what do you think of that word? I have. I don't get it but i mean why not mm. it, so that's basically like what i would remember as um screamo is that like people when people refer to screamo that's what this new thing is yeah is there is there a section at a record store that says that like <laughs> there how, might be now <laughs> there might be now yeah i, I don't know that's uh that's that's uh it, it feels uh new to me but there's got to be a new term for that shit now right because scram's a couple years old i believe right yeah yeah scram's is at least maybe i don't know five seven years old now right right oh, well when i first heard it i had no idea what they were talking about then i saw all the bands that were like listed as scram's and i'm like i don't know it's a it, it could be an age gap thing with me and uh um i don't know you you, you never know but with with the the new album that came out in 2018 did you ever think of the response that it was going to do because you guys blew up it's like now Dardis is a is a juggernaut of a band um you know selling out shows and and you know in europe and pretty much everywhere did you think that album was going to blow up like it did no man um i think uh we we only had like two tours planned and in a way I just kind of thought that would be, that would be enough, you know? Um, so it was exciting way more than I thought would ever happen for the band. I thought we would just kind of, kind of stick to small bars and clubs and I was totally cool with that. <laughs> Lex said, good point. We're huge now. <laughs> huge. <laughs> but no, no, that, I mean, that was, uh, yeah, it was, that was surreal. I didn't see it going that way. But um, and it, it, it's weird to also have like a, a year like that and then just complete halt, stop. Yeah. But it looks like things are starting up in the fall, in the summer, yeah. they say. Well, I mean, you 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 live in um, Austin, correct? Yeah. I mean, Texas is wide open right now, aren't they? They just had the last night. They had that UFC in Houston that had sixteen thousand people. In it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. I mean, I feel like um it never really closed down in some parts around here, you know, like in Austin and in the cities, people were a little more responsible or acted like there was something happening. But um, if I go 10 minutes in any direction out of the city, uh, there's no mask in sight. Yeah. 
and you guys had a grueling tour schedule too. I mean, you guys were touring uh, like crazy all over the place. How was that, um, you know, physically for you guys trying to hit all those shows? I know Lex had a little bit of a, a health issue with with uh, a slip disc or whatever. And, and on top of that, he's he's always, you know, you know, he, Lex is a wild guy on stage, and, and which I love him for wild that. Wild guy. He's, uh, he, he, you know, he gets things done. So um, what, how was it physically for you for the, that tour? I do remember, um, I mean, I, I did a lot of touring in the past couple of years as a tour manager. Um, but this just exhausted the shit out of me. I remember just like forgetting some parts of songs on stage. Just like being backstage after the show and they'd be like, dude, what happened to that song? And what are you talking about? It's a song I've played for, you know, 10 years and I'm just forgetting how to do things and just hitting exhaustion that I've never experienced before. So, uh, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm sure sleep deprivation is, uh, it was like uh, no, no sleep and, and just, like I said, uh, a grueling schedule back, you know, dates all over the place. Yeah, I, know, I mean, and I know Nick dealing with Lyme, Lyme too. That that must have been hard on him too. Yeah, I just there would be some days my hands were swollen and shit that I wasn't prepared for because I had been touring pretty epically up until that point as a tour manager. But um, yeah, I guess it was just the uh, physicality of the damn thing. Daughters like what for four years played a fifteen minute show. <laughs> yeah, so it was also wild an hour, an hour, over an, hour, an hour and over an hour set now it's yeah like, that that was kind of wild to think about like wow we're doing an hour i, I didn't I, it's still I had yet to kick in that we had enough music to break an hour live but yeah i just remember like you know, get back to the hotel at 2 a.m we have to leave, we have to be back in the lobby at six to catch a flight to go wherever the hell we're going next like yeah that shit will wear on you man for sure now when daughters first started when was Crippler Crossfoot Face ha happening? Like, what what was the what was the timeline with that? And I know you were playing guitar in that band, correct? I did maybe two or three shows uh, on guitar, and then I did a few shows on drums. But I want to say that was during as the sunsets was. That was pre daughters. So yeah, Crippler Cross Face. I don't really remember how it started, but it started in the practice space that As the Sunsets was doing, kind of like a joke thing. Yeah. And it was just a lot of fun, just an excuse for us to get together and hang out. But uh, yeah, they wrote a whole record, recorded it, and then they had shows. And I think it was just like every show they would do, everybody that we could fit in the van would just bomb down there and hang out, you know? So I don't know if I asked, invited myself to be in the band or what, but you know, I was going to be there hanging anyway, so I just popped up. And um, for whatever reason, the I think the bass player for As the Sunsets at the time, Joe Kruko, was the drummer. And he left and moved to Connecticut or something to join another band. So, you know, there was an opening on drums and Crippler. And that was my lifelong dream up to that point. So I finally achieved it, man. Now, when, the, when that, when the, uh, was it like an EP that come up, came out? that you guys did uh yeah i wasn't on that but yeah i think they did like a 10 song record or something like that yeah but lex let in was nick playing in that band as well wasn't he yeah that was like uh, yeah nick was all the guitar all the songwriting was all nick so if anybody hasn't heard that stuff go back i, I like that shit that's my era like that that uh that that <laughs> that album is like really good to me. I love it. It's got the the screamy, and then it's got the low guttural growls too in it, and stuff like that. Uh, so, like I said, anybody who hasn't heard Crippler Crossface, go find it somewhere on YouTube <laughs> or wherever. Because <laughs> uh, yeah, I love that. That was shit. a funny band. I definitely love that shit. So, speaking of going back to like daughters now, um, are you guys working on new songs kind of remotely? I know you guys are living all over the place. Uh, is there new daughter songs being worked on right now? There are, yeah, definitely. Um, I think um, I don't know about Nick or Lex. I'm I'm vac vaccinated, so we're gonna hopefully start getting together soon. Nick's got a bunch of ideas recorded, ready to go. I think we just have to start sharing with each other. So I think at the, this point, I know Nick's definitely been working a lot on some stuff. I've got some stuff. Um, 
we just got to put the ideas together. And now that the world seems to be opening up a little more, it's probably time to start doing it soon. So yeah, I, I would hope we're in the studio. Uh, I don't know, summer, fall, something like that, but we'll see. Now is it, is there anything different musically that you guys are, are or are you kind of just like in the same vein of this, the, the last album? Uh, I think there will be some changes for sure. I not, it's something that will just kind of happen to us while we're going through it. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't know that the changes are any changes we actually experience are really sat down and it's not like strategy. It kind of just comes out that way. Just kind of, go for it so i i assume there will be more changing of sounds yeah um i also wanted to speak of the color of violence i know you played uh you did this you you recorded that album euthanized correct um i was one of two drummers on that record and how did that come about um uh there was a record label called city of hell that put out the first daughter seven inch one of those guys moved down to Florida and befriended the kids that are in that band, Color of Violence. And they wanted a, uh, they were just like a two piece studio project. And when they wanted to record their songs, they got folks that they liked to come in and do it. And so I was a phone call. They are just like, hey, you wanna come down? I want you to learn these eight songs, record them. And that's that. And yeah. And, and do you, there was no shows that got played out as that? As we that? actually, we actually played a few shows. Um, it was, you know, it was fun. There was always two drummers. So that was kind of interesting because some of those songs were really like blast beat fast. So playing blast beats with a second drummer. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of tough to do, but that was fun. They're all great people too. So that was like 2009, correct? Yeah. 2008, 2009. That feels right. I, I I just like stumbled onto that. I I never knew that you um, you know, did the drums on that. Uh, well, you know, partly on that album. And um, I was when I heard it, I was like pleasantly surprised on on what it sounded like. You know what I mean? It was it, like oh, right heavy, on. heavy and and like I don't know. I I wish it was kind of under the radar for me. And I'm kind of glad I like got into it and started listening to it because it's it's definitely a, a great album. Yeah, man. That was I mean, it was a cool project. I never really been hired to just fly in and play your drums before but yeah so that was cool and i'm still buds with all those guys today so good people and with lex's new project that's coming out um i know it wasn't a very conventional drumming for you uh can you talk about kind of like the percussion aspect of of working on lex's new album uh that was just kind of uh we we assembled this kind of gnarly kit and um what i liked about it is it forced me to think differently no matter what i couldn't like i was never really comfortable with it and we would i would just jam and they would just roll the tape and then we would kind of uh lex and um seth from machines of magnets would just kind of listen to the playback because by the time I, I would just try to record as many ideas as possible until my ears are tired and i'm just mentally exhausted and i just go outside smoke cigarettes and <laughs> probably be grumpy while they just went through my playback and decided what they wanted to make into songs yeah so it was it was really one of those things just kind of hatching it in the studio less of a plan and just being able to just kind of like think as you go i guess i don't know but it was also like you know i i needed a lot of input from lex too because it was a lot of just pulling ideas out of your ass i didn't i didn't really play with another musician i just kind of just played drums and they built a lot of stuff around that so it was it was rad that way. That was one of the most fun studio experiences I've ever had. Yeah, but it and was you kind of like, went I, into a club. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't tell it. I couldn't tell if it was any good. To be honest with you, because it was just so weird. Like I didn't even play with actual drumsticks. I had one of those rod brushes and an actual brush. So one of them is like um, like spaghetti almost. You know, it was just it was a really weird experience. But uh, those guys would have shut me down or shut it down if I wasn't doing something that they could have used. So that was cool. And you went into it blindly, not knowing what, what, what you, right? Yeah. Like, I, Lex, down and do this. Lex had sent me a, a demo or two like months prior, but that was more like stuff he just did on his phone on GarageBand or something. I was expecting yeah. to have more musical cues, but 
whatever. I, I liked how it went, and I I think he's he dug it too. So. Yeah, the, I'm, I'm interested. On, uh, the first single that came out, I really really enjoyed, and uh, I'm I'm interested in hearing the whole album whenever it does come out. Yeah, I gotta be honest. I haven't really heard much besides that either, so I am also interested in hearing on what it sounds like. Um, speaking of uh, the Daughters tour back a little while ago, Jerome's Dream got to play in Europe with you guys. Uh, how was that yeah. for you? Uh, I'm, I was, was so stoked to have them get back together again. I got to see them in Somerville when they did their tour. Um, how was that? Um, I saw actually Nick at that show in Somerville, and we shot the shit for a little while. Um, how was that for you guys? Uh, that was great, man. Uh, I remember, um, I want to say the first show was maybe somewhere in France. And all of us just kind of crammed up to the front of the stage watching Jerome Stream for the first time in 10 or something years. And when they were, you know, I guess, what, what would you want to say, their heyday, like 2000-ish, uh, late 90s, they blew us away then. Mm. So watching them just play in front of us was totally fucked up, <laughs> but awesome. Yeah, those, I mean, they're like just the best people. So good humans, good travel people. I felt bad that they had to exist around us because we can be gnarly people. But, um, you know, they got on with us. Everything went well. And watching them play every night was a pleasure. So, yeah. Jeff, Jeff's on here right now. He said, miss you, man. Oh, Jeff. I miss you too, buddy. Um, yeah, I was I was super stoked that, that, that they got on the tour with you guys. Um, going forward after COVID and stuff like that, um, would you guys ever think about grabbing another, like, old – like heavy band like that to open up for you guys yeah man i mean i love that shit it makes touring touring with your friends and or touring with people that you look up to or uh dig really makes life better on tour so i would love to do that i'm not sure who right now but uh yeah i love that idea and and back th back then, like when Daughters kind of first began, and as the Sunsets, what were kind of the bands that you enjoyed playing with um, all over the country? Like, what kind of bands blew you away when you played live with them? Um, and and who did you really really enjoy for bands, if you can remember back then? I remember with as the Sunsets, we went to this college. Uh, it's fucked up. Okay, so we left Providence to drive out to this college show in Pennsylvania that a bunch of bands we were getting into were playing. And about the time we were about to hit the Connecticut-New York border, my van, something happened to it, and we couldn't break 30 miles an hour. So we decided to turn the van around and head back to Providence. From basically the New York border to Providence, about three hours, I want to say, with a car that drives 60 miles an hour. Going 30 miles an hour was um, – that was challenging. And I, we got pulled over for going too slow on the highway. That was cool. But then we put as much gear as we could into, I think, our bass player's station wagon and turned back around and drove back and arrived there probably like 9 a.m. And on that show, I think Love Lost But Not Forgotten was on that show. And uh, an albatross was on the show. It was the first time I think I see, saw an albatross, and they were pretty crushing. Um, I mean, early daughter stuff, we, our first tour was with exam. So playing with those guys every night was crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got to speak with, to Dustin, uh, yeah. like a, a while ago and Dustin's such a great guy. I, I, I love Dustin and uh, yeah, the yeah. stuff that he's doing father now is, is really interesting as well. So. Um, it's awesome to, to hear, you know, I, I actually saw you guys at, in Salem, Mass. when you guys played, I, I don't know what it was. It was like a Knights of Columbus or something like that. I put the video uh, on my Instagram just a couple of days ago that uh, exam played with you guys at that show. Oh, right on. Okay. I remember that. Yeah, VFW Hall. I want to say, like, Unearth played that, or am I, am I misremembering it? No, I think Unearth did play that. I think yeah. they might have played... They might have played before you guys, like before exam too, I think. I don't know. Yeah, there was, there was always these like DFW Hall shows with like 14 bands on it. And some bands that should headline would rather just get in and get out of there. <laughs> yeah, yeah that was those weird shows. But yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I sort of remember that show now. Yeah. But that's crazy. You were at all that shit and you recorded all that shit. I love that. 
Yeah, I think this week I I put the I put that show up that you got a video of you guys playing. I play I put the Tufts as the sunset show uh, with Wolves. I put the ICC show in Austin <laughs> when it was like light the fuse and run uh, transistor. <laughs> like that show. Excuse me. Um, I forget who else played. I know it was Transistor, Light the Fuse and Run. Uh, I can't think of who. Uh, Unicorner played. Um, there was a couple other bands. And then uh, there was a show that I posted in Lawrence um, with Dot Flashline. Uh, the Assistant, I think, played that show. Uh, Under a Dying Sun. Played okay, that show. yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to play a lot. Uh, there was like a warehouse in Haverhill, I want to say. And as the Sunsets used to play, do you remember that being from that area? It might like be it might third be. or fourth floor of a warehouse, and in the summertime it was brutal, man. I don't know that there were windows, but yeah, was it? Do you remember it? Uh, there was a place in Haver called UFI Coffee House, and then it turned into Exit Twenty Three. I feel like we might have gotten a show there once, or a place that was like a coffee house in the area, but there was also just like a brutal warehouse. carrier base cab up five flights of stairs warehouse that. Yeah. Wasn't that um, in Lawrence? Was, Wasn't that in Lawrence? Maybe it was. Maybe it was Lawrence. Is that the same area? Uh, yeah, they they border each other. Mm. Um, I feel like I saw Early Grace at that place. I I, I remember going okay. four stores up, and it was like Cave In, Early Grace. Um, I forget the other bands, but like you said, it was hot as fuck up there, and um, it was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Somebody wow. wrote, "Did Seven Day Curse play that warehouse?" I'm um, sure they did. I'm sure they did. It's funny hearing all these like old bands that we you used to play with and I, and I used to go see. Uh, is it kind of weird hearing these bands and you forgot you forget about them and then you're like, holy shit, I forget about like, you know. Yeah, it's it's funny. Like, uh, you know, that was my life for so long. I can't I can't remember so much of it, but you know, Seven Day Curse. Yeah, we played a lot of shows with those guys. Um, but just talking with you is is uh, a lot of stuff's flooding back. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Yeah, Guess do you I'm remember old. me and Lex always talk about uh, non compost mentis? Do you remember yes, them? Yes, yeah, yeah, they were rad. Didn't – what were they before that? Weren't they something before that or after that? Uh, See, we're going to do a lot of that. What was this? And then look off into nowhere. <laughs> what was, like, I'm trying to avoid that, but I'm just full of that. Well, non compost I mean, mentis. Maybe the drummer went on to play in Cancer Conspiracy, or I might have that wrong. Yeah, I probably made that up. Probably made that up. I'm, I might I'm, do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but those guys were always fun to watch. They always wore the some sort of suits and shit like that. Yeah. Did they have we, signs? They, like they wouldn't speak, but they would hold up signs. Or I I never heard those guys speak ever. Uh, the yeah, yeah. Couple yeah. times that I saw them, they had like Seabrook power plant suits on. Yep, yep, yeah. Yep. Um, I forget like the other well, the other time I saw them, they had some other thing on, and uh, they didn't speak a word at all right right and they you, changed very, they changed very differently like it was kind of like a metal chorus album and then they put that album out on tortuga that was like super fucking heavy like way different and like more chaotic and like crazy i don't know yeah. if you remember that album but um uh, it was i really don't i don't um but did you ever make it out to like the burlington or plattsburgh area to see any shows um burlington uh From, vermont Vermont. I went to a few, but I didn't. I didn't go see too too many there. I was mostly like New Ham, like Manchester, Rochester, New Hampshire, all the way down to Providence, like in Connecticut. I would always hit up Connecticut shows too, because that's like yeah. where most, most of the shows were happening back then. It's like that straight line from. Also, Maine. Maine always had a lot of shows back then in the late '90s as well. Um, I saw Torn Apart in Maine and uh, Shit. being Kindled I can't remember and... any shows in Maine, man. You guys yep. played in Maine, though. I think I saw you guys play in Maine. Uh, maybe it's possible. In I think it was like Topsham, Maine. At uh... Did you play a kid's house named Joel's House in Topsham, Maine? I, I could have sworn I saw you guys up there. I don't know, man. It's just not happening in my mind right now. I can remember playing. Was a was there a venue called the Safe and Sound in New Hampshire? Yeah, that's Rochester. Okay, yeah. okay, I can remember that. Oh, I remember as the Sunsets playing a show, and we got our buddies, uh, this band Inar, on the show, and um, we were a little late. They had played by the time we showed up, and they were getting out of there because the local band from Concord, New Hampshire, 
I guess that kind of just showed up and put themselves on the show was also fighting with people that they didn't oh, like. Nice. But it was kind of like, uh, I think Grief was on this show, possibly. Like, it was not really a hardcore show, but they yeah. just kind of decided to split sets with other bands, and while they were playing, decided to get pretty aggressive with everybody there, so. Yeah, it was I, a weird, I can remember uh, that like, shit happening a lot. People splitting sets and fighting people, and yeah. Yeah, it was a weird time back then. It was like a lot of a lot of crust kids would like all of a sudden they'd play with like a straight edge band and then it would be like crust kids and straight edge kids fighting each other in the pit in Rochester, New Hampshire. Um, when I saw ASOC in Reversal of Man, they shut the, they shut the show down early um, on the ASOC set because there was like a lot of uh, crust kids and sh like straight edge kids fighting. And so they shut the whole show down back hmm. then. Hmm. So it, 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 happened, it happened quite a lot. I see Lex saying we drove to Maine for a canceled show and played anyway. I feel like, <laughs> but I feel like we did that more than once. <laughs> I know we, we drove all the way up for a show in New Hampshire and the guy was just like, yeah, there's no show today. And we asked if we could play. And then we just went out to the street to see if people wanted to watch a band. Yeah. And I remember playing, um, yeah, I can remember getting out to shows, like driving. I remember driving all the way out to Rochester, New York. And there it was, just a note on the door. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, drive all the way back home. Show's canceled. Now, now, do you miss out? I know that you guys played big clubs and stuff like that, bigger like bigger places. Do you miss uh, playing basement shows? Fuck yeah. Um, having a drum set uh, always sucked, you know. I wish I had smaller drum kit for that because that's like 11 trips for me anyways. So uh, that's the only thing I, I would do differently. I would just bring like two pieces of a drum kit in and I'd do basement shows all day long, man. That shit was always fun. Then again, I don't know if anyone wants to see like a 40-year-old guy playing half a drum kit in a basement anymore. That might not be as exciting for people as I think it is. But yeah, those, those were fun. I, <laughs> when we were on tour with Exam, uh, I remember... The, it was a rough tour, man. There's a lot of shows that nobody came out to. Um, and we played this one show in a basement. And I want to say if anybody showed up besides the kids that lived in the house, uh, there's two. And us and Exam set up in opposing corners and played at the same time or back and forth from each other. Um, you know, that was kind of a drag to show up to a house show and nobody was there. But when it was like kind of going for it, it was always the craziest show. <laughs> So I dug that. Yeah. Um, do you think, uh, you know, with COVID being so crazy that Daughters could do a, a little uh, basement tour, like a short East Coast basement tour um, ever in the future? I know your band is a lot bigger now and you guys got a lot more equipment and shit like that going on. So it kind of be hard to fit in all that shit. In somebody yeah, yeah. We got, we, that's all it is. We just have too much equipment. <laughs> you guys might have to dumb down a little bit and get like real small, <laughs> real small. I mean, I, uh, that's, thinking about that right now, especially from a COVID pause point of view, that sounds awesome. But yeah, I don't know. That might be a, a nightmare. And I'd feel bad for anybody's house that we're going into to do that to them. You know, that might well, kind of suck. Have to, you might have to switch your name to some uh, secret incognito name so that, you know, you didn't have 500 kids showing up in a basement that only fits, you know, 35 kids. Yeah, man. Yeah, if you can. Didn't Converge do that kind of recently? I remember, or kind of recently. What's kind of recently in my mind, really? Like 2012, yeah. I heard they were doing kind of secret yeah, shows. They, uh, yeah, I think they switched their name, and then that that's kind of how, you know, just by word of mouth, that, that might have happened. Yeah, I, I, I'm just, I'm down to not be in my house for a year straight anymore. So, uh, yeah, I, I would do house shows. That would be fun. Yeah, that would that would be amazing. I would, well, I mean, if you guys do that, hit me up because I got a nice empty basement in New Hampshire. So. Uh, oh yeah, all right. You gotta film yeah. us on your your old cameras, so it looks all grainy and vintage. <laughs> I still I still have the old camcorder right here. It's, it still works uh, amazingly. That's amazing. Um, so usually, um, I at the end I usually do a little rapid fire uh, questions. And I don't want to keep you too long, so um, I'll throw these rapid-fire questions at you. Um, your favorite New England hardcore band, punk band of all time? New England. Duh. 
I don't know, man. I can't answer it. All right, give me give me three then. Three of your top New England. Uh... Well, I fuck you know. Uh, I want to do this question justice because New England is where I came up. So I, I got a bunch of deep dive answers. Or uh, I don't know. I mean, I I remember thinking um, the day after was rad, but I also haven't heard the day after music since maybe the late 90s or early 2000s so i couldn't tell you if they're still rad but in my head i really want to hear day after and they're always really cool guys and influential um new england hardcore um i don't know i mean i know providence was like a big influence on 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 stuff like that a lot of people you know what i hear a lot of i hear a lot of converge i hear a lot of ssd i hear a lot of uh uh jerry's kids i hear a lot of you know i mean converge i mean ssd converge like that that i wasn't really there for a lot of that scene you know converge is also like definitely influential and the bands that they always played with were also like when they would bring a band in town that was always a great show but yeah, I think I, I really fell more into Providence like style and scene once I started to uh, understand who's there. So um, there's a lot of cool shit there. But uh, yeah, man, I don't I don't really know. I I'm ill prepared for your question. <laughs> so I I guess I have failed. So you can tell I me mean, when I fail your questions. <laughs> I I agree with uh, Providence too. Uh, um... I've been on an Arab on radar kick lately. I saw them a bunch of times back back in the day, but like I can't stop listening to them. Like for some reason, all of a sudden now, I can't stop fucking listening to them. And I'm trying to like watch every live video I can online too. Uh, just um, I don't know what it is. It's like some kick for me to like just walk, you know, listen to them. And I've been on a, uh, the body kick too for some reason too. Um, yeah, which yeah. Providence was always like such a special place for me. Even being a New Hampshire kid, um, I think I saw the one time I saw his hero is gone. I saw him at the Safari Lounge in. Oh Rome. wow! Yeah, um, yeah. And the, and like I said, Providence has just been like a huge, huge. I used to go to Club Babyhead way back in the day uh, when I was real young, and I saw bands like DRI and um, I don't know if you ever heard of a band called Excel from California, um, but uh, I saw a shit ton of bands at Club Babyhead, and, and Providence just always has uh, like a deep, you know, thing in my heart. So. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Lex. Hi, Lex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Um, Providence has more bands that oh, uh, scared the shit out of me, um, and I, I dug that. And so, when did when did you? change uh you know what living in massachusetts what brought you to uh rhode island rhode island was closer for me than like boston so providence plus we, we were getting shows in providence i think it was just easier to get down there <laughs> now did you did you move down to rhode island after living in massachusetts or were uh, yeah you always in massachusetts yeah, Lex had a uh, Lex had an apartment. Um, and Lex, I'm sure you can remember. How much did we pay rent for that apartment? He had a third floor that I moved into, eventually, and I think we used to pay 170 bucks each for rent. But uh, yeah, Lex was down there when I was still living at home with my folks, and uh, I uh, moved in with him. And yeah, that was like maybe a half hour from my house. From Boston was uh, more than an hour, and we were getting shows down there, so it just made sense to kind of get down there. We had a practice space in that area. Yeah, Lex said Rhode Island people wouldn't beat you guys up. Yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't take we couldn't take it to Brockton. That was the only other town we were uh, playing shows in, so. Yeah, Brockton but, uh, turned into a real rough rough city uh after after a while, for sure. I, it was always scary when we were there. I want to say like my second show there, somebody hit somebody else over the head with a fire extinguisher and the whole club and hallways all filled with the fire extinguisher shit. Whatever happens when you hit somebody over the head with it or something. Yeah. Now were yeah. you too young to go were you, you too young to go to the rat or did you go to shows at the rat in Boston? I never went to a show at the rat and I feel like it closed down within the year I started going up to Boston for shows. Yeah. So it was kinda like uh 
like where were the shows happening at Middle East and like did you go to the Paradise? There was TT TT the Bears. Um, yeah, I feel like Paradise. Um, there was a couple over by Fenway. I want to say. Yeah, was the the did did didn't the uh, was it the Roxy that had shows too? Roxy, right? Was it the Roxy then? Uh, it might have been something else. Oh, yeah, there was the Axis and the Avalon. Yeah, right. Axis, Avalon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I I do not know. There was a lot of shows in VFW halls in weird places too, man. But Worcester would always have a show. Like the Space in Worcester was always a, a spot that we went to yeah. pretty often. The space was so good, but um, that's another place that had the, the lineups were like stacked every week. Yeah, there. yeah, it was incredible to go there. And uh, you, did you obviously went to Espresso Bar in in Worcester too, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like says Mamakin. I never got to Mamakin, but I remember that place. Yeah. Bill I, Bill's I Bar. That, yeah, hmm. I saw shows at Bill's Bar. I never Where went was... to Mamakin either. Yeah, yeah. Um. All right. So I'll, I'll keep going with questions. Uh. What was the first punk hardcore show you attended? Like a real first punk hardcore show? I'm not quite sure uh, which one it was, but it would have been one of those Lupo matinee shows, I want to say. And I feel like um, Fury of Five was always on it. I don't know if they were booked on it or they would just show up and just get a song or two in there. Uh, I want to say Overcast played every single one of them. Uh, yeah. Hate Breed was probably on it. Times Expired was probably on it. Like, you know, just a mixture of all the Worcester, Boston-ish, Providence area bands. And if there a band from New York got on it, there was usually a fight. You'd know because people would be fighting usually. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, all right. Uh, all-time favorite punk hardcore show you played. Uh, this is kind of a two-part question. Um, you can give me one or two. One with As the Sunsets, and one, and then one or two with As the Sunsets, and one or two with Daughter. Like, what was the the best shows that resonated with you, and you had you had fond memories of? Uh, as the Sunset show, I can still remember that was pretty crazy. We did the uh, trauma. It was like a trauma event at Fort Thunder. And it was just us and another band. I can't remember the other band. That was pretty crazy. That was cool. But that might be tied with... Uh, we had a second show at Fort Thunder. It was supposed to be As the Sun Sets, There Were Wires, Catharsis, and Converge. And we oh, had yeah. to move it to our practice space last minute. That was... Uh, I don't know how it didn't get shut down, but that show was crazy. And you can still... If you can still find footage of the Converge set it's it's pretty crazy to watch because I can remember like where our equipment was, what corner that's in. You can see just like pipes being hung on by people, and we didn't ask any of our roommates. Like there was four other bands in that room with us. We just th threw it in there and hoped for the best. And <laughs> yeah. I don't think I don't think too much shit got broken, but yeah, that show that show was packed. And I think the Converge set is on like YouTube or something. But that 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 show was packed. Yeah, that was crazy, and I'm just I'm surprised that we didn't get evicted. But uh, more, more things, or like you said, more things broken because. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. I can remember, like I think some of our roommates showed up to rehearse though, and there's like 300 kids in the room, just going crazy <laughs> and just like sitting on their gear waiting for a band to play. Um, Lex, Lex says you uh, got kicked out of that space after that show. Is that what happened? Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. That, that, there was a lot of sketchy shit happening in that building anyway, so it's just like par for the course. We, we ended up getting back in there for Daughters when Daughters first started. And I remember there was a band above us, a cover band, um, but they only played uh, live lightning crashes over and over and over again. Unless that was just my head. That could have been all in my head. Yeah. <laughs> but I'd, I'd like to think there was a band above us playing live lightning crashes over and over okay so as far as daughters goes i think um maybe uh in 2013 when we played our first shows at the met after uh the hiatus or whatever just because uh, those are you know i didn't know that we'd ever play again and those are just crazy those were overwhelming to me because we had never really sold anything out up to that point so yeah um I have a, oh, I actually have a flyer too of daughters from Dude, Dude, Dude Fest. How, how was this show? I gotta be honest with you, I don't think we did that. 
you, you guys I, didn't end up playing that. We, too? I think we had to cancel that because we got offered uh, the Give Up the Ghost tour. Mm. So somebody recently sent me that same flyer because I want to say the Color of Violence is on it as well. Uh, or, yes, the Color of yeah. Violence is on this. Yes. Yeah. So one of the guys from the Color of Violence sent that to me and asked, like, did, did we play together? And yeah. uh, we did because I think we got offered after we confirmed that. We were pretty good at that, confirming things and then canceling to go do other things for a sec. So luckily we got a booking agent, so I didn't keep doing that to people. But um, yeah, we got the Give Up the Ghost tour and pulled off that last minute. Yeah, I feel like a lot of bands kind of um, pulled off that. I was talking to Antonio oh, that's from Maracate, Mar 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 and he said that they didn't play that show either, and they're on the flyer. Ah, uh, that sucks. <laughs> that sucks to do that to... <laughs> I, I I think it was uh, this guy Derek that was also in that band uh, that booked that, but I might be remembering it wrong. If it was him, I'm sorry. We also gave that guy fleas. If it's the same guy. <laughs> oh really? Nice. Yeah, we were on tour with Zombie, and we stayed at a kid's house uh, after a house show. I think I might be mixing tours up. By the way, we ended up playing a show in the Missouri area. Stayed at a house with Zombie. I remember we got there and uh, we're like, why aren't any cushions on the couches, man? And they're like, oh, we had fleas, so we had to burn them. We're like, what the fuck? <laughs> I remember sleeping under a table in a living room there. And around maybe 5, 6 a.m., somebody in zombie going, I just got bit by a flea. And I woke up as everyone's just filing out of the house. And the next night, the next show was in uh, Indianapolis, maybe. And I think the guy that books that fest uh, put us up. And I remember him uh, hitting me up saying that we gave him fleas. And I remember our merch had fleas. So we had given it to our merch, too. So you like it? Yeah, we'll sell you these shirts cheap. They got, you know, not telling yeah. anybody. And then everybody's I, like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't actually remember having the fleas, but we definitely, somebody did. Somebody gave them to that dude. And. Yeah. Gave it to our merch. So, yeah, how's that for crust punk status, man? Yeah, that's 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 a good story right there. That's is it? <laughs> is it a good story? <laughs> <laughs> it's a story. Yes, true. Um, my next question. All-time favorite punk hardcore show you attended that you didn't oh. play, that you saw, like, a punk or hardcore band that, like, really, you know, you were taken back by? When I was... Uh... One of the first like hardcore shows, like that was a official hardcore show uh, I ever saw, was um, at the living room. Uh, it was, I think, um, it was Snapcase playing on Steps, I think. And uh, I had never really seen what you know, a, a, a headlining hardcore band like that. And they kind of kicked my balls in a little bit, you know. That was that was cool to see that. So now, that was pretty. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Were you with, uh, like a victory guy when that big rush happened? Uh, kind of. I was getting into it. There was like victory was doing those comps. And I yeah. somehow got my hands on the second one. Or maybe Lex got it and showed it to me. So it was whatever was on that second comp was my in introduction to that label and the bands happening at the time. But I, I can remember it was like, you know, there was definitely like Bloodlit and Earth Crisis was a victory band, right? And, yeah. and Strife. But I I more dug Snapcase at that time yeah. than those those other bands. And uh, so getting to see them, um, yeah, that that was awesome. Yeah, I was, I, when Victory hit, I was kind of, obviously like Earth Crisis kind of um, hooked me with des Destroy the Machines. But I was more, I kind of resonated more towards like the dead guy album and the and right, like, right 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 and uh integrity when integrity uh got put on to victory those two bands were kind of big for me yeah i i then i found dead guy later and i you know would eventually definitely dig that more for some reason i don't know it was just harder to it took me longer to find dead guy than it did uh i don't know there was a lot of earth crisis shows coming through a lot of well, man ball shows yeah, it was like they were almost like the black sheep of, of Victory because they didn't get as much clout as, as Earth Crisis and Snapcase and, and Strife because that was just kind of like the straight edge movement and, and Dead Guy was kind of doing their own thing. It, it was almost like yeah. they didn't, like them and Integrity, was, it was almost like they didn't fit on that label, but somehow uh, that what, what they put out on that 
that label was amazing. Well, couldn't you say the same about like a Bloodlet maybe? Yeah, same thing with Bloodlet, yes. Yeah, yeah. like they yeah. were definitely, I, I think like uh, bands like Dead Guy or like, you know, Refused was a victory band at that point, right? Yeah, I think they were, yeah. But they were a little different. But I remember digging those bands, but those were also, it was harder to find their stuff or, or find people that would be able to record it for you on cassette or something. Because yeah, the, the other bands were a lot more popular in the area, I think. Yeah, well, and then they started doing like uh, like Path of Resistance and that band Raid got on, on Victory as well. So I, I like, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Dead guy, I, Dead guy was just huge to me, de definitely. And then when Kiss a Goodbye happened and they, which is strange that they got up, put on Revelation and put that, that thing out, which is kind of weird to me as well. Yeah, I feel like we got into those bands after they were, or I got into them after they were broken up. So they were introduced to me as defunct bands, basically, yeah. which was a shame because I really, really like those bands. Yeah. Uh, um, so what was the, I'm a huge movie guy. What was the last movie you watched? I know you, I know you used to be a good uh, big movie guy. You know, it's, it's weird. Like, um, I was uh, discussing this the other day, going into COVID, just staying home. I lived off of like the streaming services, you know, I just binge, just, I can't even watch TV now, man. Um, I started watching a movie last night, but I had to pause it. I'd, I'd have to look it up for you. But uh, yeah, it's like the first time in my life I'm just so sick of TV or even podcasts because that's all I've done all fucking year to kill yeah. time. Um, excuse me while I pull this up. But I started no watching a movie last night that I was like, you know what? I, can't, I might like movies. But then 20 minutes and I was like, how long is a fucking movie again? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of failing you at this uh, question round part of your... Yeah, it happens. <laughs> Does it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the fuck? Either way... Um, Oh, almost there. No, I don't know how to work anything anymore, man. I can't find shit. So, yeah, there was a movie I started last night that I dug. How's that? <laughs> yeah, you dug half of it because you had to shut it off. Yeah, yeah. So I might start on movies again. Next time we talk in another 20 years when we're doing, like, our uh, how's retirement and grindcore questions going, <laughs> I might have a movie title for you then. Yeah, my works. problem is I watch I watch so many movies that now I can't I can't find a fucking movie that I want to watch at all. I'll sit and stream. I'll like roll through all the streaming things, and I can't find one fucking movie I want to watch because I've seen everything, and I don't yeah, really want to watch yeah. something. I don't want to watch something horrible. So, Lex is a really good term for that uh, option paralysis, just like flipping through the goddamn menu screens. But um, yeah, no, I feel you. I uh. I think I've just watched so much TV being home this whole COVID shutdown that I, I can't I can't face it anymore. I just don't want to be sitting in front of a screen anymore. Yeah. So what have you been doing to pass your time then? Basically still sitting in front of a screen, but just looking at a blank screen. I'm just <laughs> trying to read, taking long walks. I don't know, man. Just trying not to dread the world. Yeah. Uh, playing music, just doing whatever I can. What's wild is... Um, I get I get feeling busy if I got three things I have to do. I have to drink coffee. Now that feels busy because of yeah. how slow life has gotten. But um, I'm not I'm not able to retain uh, information anymore because I think I'm out of the habit of memorizing stuff. Yeah. Like um, there there is also the way like TV is released. You know, I'll binge watch it and I'll forget all of it if I if I binge watch it. But yeah. it's the same thing with the way like Spotify kind of throws new releases at me. I'll listen to it and I'll dig it, and then I'll just forget that that band and that release ever happened. So, yeah, or I'm happens. just getting old, man. I, I, it could be that. Yeah, too. I think I think it's a, a combination of getting old. Uh, I have the same problem. I have so much information going in my head, and then uh, <laughs> my kids will be like, "Oh, uh, how was that movie?" And, and it'll be like maybe three or you know three to five years since I watched it. I'm like, you know what? I can't tell you one thing that like <laughs> even, I don't even know what right. it was about. All right, good. So I'm not alone there. Yeah, that happens all the time. I've like it's clear that I've watched this whole thing, but I don't remember more than five minutes of it. And I think that's just what binge watching does to you, maybe. 
or yeah. does to me. So. And then I'll rewatch it, and it's like a brand new movie to me. I'll remember like slight pieces of it, and then I'm like, oh shit, I remember some of this, but it's almost like a brand new movie, and I'm like, oh no, 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 wonder, <laughs> why, no wonder why I liked it back then, kind of. Right, right, yeah. So I don't on, know. On the movie kick, um, I always ask this too: favorite all-time horror movie for you? Uh, you know, I think it would be. It might be Friday the 13th Part 3, because I am a, uh, I like him in a hockey mask, and I think I first remembered that one, this the first one I saw. And that was and in 3D? I didn't see it in 3D at first. Oh, you didn't? Uh, no, but uh, we had, uh, my, my buddy's dad would let us watch that shit. And he, th this kid only lived like eight houses down from me. But I remember riding my bike. That movie scared me so much. I remember like thinking, like in the woods, this guy's got to be coming for me. So uh, I, that's pretty rad. I, I always remember in that movie the uh, <laughs> the girl that got shot with like the dart gun from the water. Remember, oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That was the one where he got hung, and then didn't he like pull himself up? Like they, she thought that he um, was dead, and he got hung in the barn. Remember, he snapped down. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then somehow, of course, he wasn't dead. You know? Yeah, there was that. There was that weird gang. They just caused mischief in the in the country. <laughs> yeah, there, that's true. yeah, yeah. Just yeah, it was, it's a it's a pretty good movie, sort of. Yeah. Probably not, but yeah, that scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. The whole like campground hockey mask killer. Now, have you watched any newer horror movies that 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 meant anything to you? Um. Not a bit. Uh, again, I might have and just can't remember it because of how if I am watching something, I'll just watch eight hours of it and then go to bed and it's just all gone. But um, no, I, I really haven't checked out a movie uh, in a bit, man, um, besides what I started watching last night that I couldn't even tell you the name of. That's how important watching movies has become to me. It's just like I'll do it as I fall asleep and then that's it. Um, I used to love movies. Mm. Yeah, I uh, – it... If you, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen Hereditary. Have you seen that? Yeah, movie? yeah, yeah. That was creepy as shit. That was a, that was it's, really good. The soundtrack's really cool too. Um, and and also Ari Aster, uh, who who did Midsummer or what? How Midsummer? However you want to say it. Uh, yeah. That I didn't like that as much as Hereditary, but it 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 was interesting. But it was like really long and drawn out. But it, it was an interesting movie, definitely. I saw that in the theater. That was cool to see in the theater for sure. I think. Um, there are some movies that maybe are designed still for a movie theater. And that might be one of them, because that was really yeah. cool to hear panned and all fucked up. But um, yeah, that might be one thing that Netflix is kind of, um, or whatever streaming services are kind of destroying. Maybe I'm not sure, yeah. or ch changing, not destroying. But now, have you seen have you seen the movie Possessor yet? No, Nick told me to check that out. Um, Again, it's just like I I have it on you know movies to watch next or whatever. I yeah. just can't apply myself to sitting down and watching a movie right now, and I don't even know how I use my time in the day to pass the time really. But I just don't want to watch a movie for a sec. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure next year this like once once things start going normally and I can start maybe getting on tour again or whatever the hell it is, I'll want to watch movies again. Yeah. It's funny you said Nick, because Nick's the one who turned me on to that to begin with. This was yeah, when, yeah. when I talked to Nick a long, long time ago. He's like, oh, uh, you know, have you seen this? And I'm like, no, I haven't seen it. And so I watched it, and it was fucking phenomenal. It was so good. And, um, I once, heard in a while, crazy. and Nick, once in a while, me and Nick throw things back and forth movie-wise to, to watch. But uh, I was like, where did you find it? Because it wasn't out. And he's like, you know, it was in Davy Jones's locker. Like, uh, so... <laughs> yeah, so Nick's I had, good, to search, uh, I had to search for it. <laughs> Nick's good with those obscure movies and stuff like that. He's always got a list if you're ever in need. Yeah, definitely. Um, but um, one of my last few questions is: I listen to a lot of hip hop. I recorded a shit ton of hip hop shows as well as hardcore and punk shows. Um, if you've been listening to hip hop at all, what have you been listening to? Whether it be something new or something old, have you been listening to hip hop at all? Last week, I went on another. Uh, I start. I put on the Chronic. I listened to the Chronic like every day last week. <laughs> but that was it, man. Again, like music and stuff like that. Like a uh, band started releasing singles, so I can sit here and listen to a couple singles. 
Yeah. But like, I, I, it's like I've just been on a quest for silence with movies and music. It's it's bizarre. So I'll play some music. I'll listen to a podcast. Brew a coffee while I'm brewing a coffee. Listen to a couple new things. Put on. I've been going through a couple of old classic records that I always dug. And last week was the Chronic. So yeah, that's really it, man. I don't know. It it just feels weird, you know. The, I, this whole COVID pause seems to. Uh, I've kind of developed habits I've never developed before. So I can't even remember a movie I just started watching. I have yeah. no desire to like sit and watch a movie anymore. I used to be the laziest shit ever. No, I just can't do it. I just can't do regular lazy anymore, man. So yeah, I hear you. Uh, Dave, Dave, Dave from Harvest is on here too. He said uh, Willie's Wonderland was fun. Uh, that's a newer Nicolas Cage movie. I haven't seen that Dave yet, <laughs> but I definitely, I definitely want to see it. It definitely looks weird and and messed up. Uh, Dave, what's going on? Um, Dave's a great guy too. Um, I don't know if you're a Harvest fan, but I, I was fucking yeah, huge, yeah fucking huge Harvest. Into Harvest. I love Harvest. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. And his new band Sunset is really good too. If you if you ever you know you're digging around and and want to listen to some heavy stuff, um, awesome. Uh, my last question: favorite uh, as the sun sunset song to play live, and favorite daughter song to play live for you? As the sunset song, man. Uh, all right, let me do daughters first because that'd probably be easiest. Uh, Favorite daughter song to play live probably be uh it's the I think it's the last one or second to last song on the la latest record is called Ocean Song. And uh, that's probably my favorite to play live, maybe because it's the most annoying and the longest song we have. But uh, as the sun sets, man, shit. I can really, I can more remember playing the first CD than I can the last two, and that may, maybe makes sense because I don't, I think we played that shit live a lot more than the last two records. But I have almost no memory of playing an As the Sunset show, to be honest with you. Really, really. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, I, just, I can't remember like being behind the drums. I don't really have specific memories of that. I remember playing a show at the living room, and I looked up, and everybody ran outside to get in a fight <laughs> like the entire club drains while we're mid song i remember that um but no i i remember uh very little i can't remember like oh during that song that happened and that might happen when you write 20 second songs you know you yeah, might yeah. have a hard time remembering a specific moment out of those yeah. 20 seconds yeah but uh yeah that was a long time ago too Lex, Lex was just saying Harvest Reunion uh, Daughters Tour when uh, things get back in. That would that would be some shit right there. That some would shit. Be, <laughs> that would I, be. Yeah, we did those Coalesce shows, and that was gnarly for us, you know? And the Harvest Bands, it's just been... You still there? Yeah, I, I, had, I, okay, I cool. was on low power. I had to click it off. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, that would be amazing. Uh, Lex, Lex was uh, into it as well. <laughs> yeah, when uh, we did that Jerome's Dream, um, we were talking about asking Jerome's Dream to uh, come with us to Europe. Nick also wanted to get Mortician on those shows too. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to be Jerome's Dream, Mortician, and Daughters. So. Oh, wow, that would have been a crazy lineup right there. Yeah, it probably would have been a weird fucking tour, but uh, whatever. I, I like that shit. Yeah. Um, now, a uh, couple more things. Do you miss playing in like a crazy, chaotic, heavy, heavy band? Um, do you ever want to branch out and kind of do like a, you know, something in Texas where, you know, like Lex did fucking Invincible? Um, like, do you ever want to kind of, do you have the fever to play like that kind of music again? Yeah, I do. I was, I, I mean, um, there was a band I started playing with here called Pushman, and that was more of like a... Uh, dead guy mathy kind of hardcore band uh this kid from new york uh cooper was playing in a band called made out of babies and he moved here started playing with guys from austin that were in a band called uh, employer employee oh yeah 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 so i got in with those guys and um that was cool cooper was in kiss it all for a second too so it was cool to be playing with you know those cats and uh that was fun but i was always leaving to tour and yeah. um one of the guitar players was also like a a session touring guy too, so he was never around. So in like five years, the band played three shows and we recorded an EP. But yeah, that was fun. 
but I'm down for it. I'm hoping uh, this project I'm kind of doing here uh, maybe gets going. But again, I can't tell, you know, any projects I've started during COVID might stay just that a COVID project. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll be ready to like talk about it if there's something to talk about. Yeah. But, now, um, now, that, now that other band, where can you hear that? Is there like a band camp or is it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's see. They, they put out a full length before I was in the band and then I played a four song EP with them. So they have a Spotify page and uh, band camp, I believe all that called. It's called Pushman if anyone's interested. But yeah, it's kind of like dead guy-ish, uh, that kind of time frame sounding stuff. And, yeah, uh, I, I had no idea. I'd love, to, I'd love to hear that, definitely. Awesome. Well, yeah, check it out. Yeah, that's like the last really, uh, that's the last, like the heaviest project I've been in as of late, I guess. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to wrap it up. And I just want to say thank you so much for doing this. I really, really appreciate it, John. Uh, I, like, Daughters to me is like, you know, top five bands of all time for me. Um, I was a singer in High School Sweethearts and Lex Lex had a huge impact on me. Uh, I've told him a million times, but seriously, you guys meant the fucking world to me back then. Um, even though I'm older, I always like kind of, I don't know what it was about Daughters and As the Sun Sets, but it, it, there was something about you guys and, and just like shooting the shit with you guys at shows and stuff like that back then. And uh, it really means a lot to me to, to talk to you and and I got to talk to Lex and Nick and stuff like that. Uh, and just hats off for everything you guys have done. And and um, thank you again. Oh, thank you, buddy. It was cool. I know all that, all those old footage that you've been putting up blows my mind, man. I So thank you for that. Yeah, I've been like, I've been still trying to find my eight millimeter tapes. I haven't put everything that I, that I recorded, but uh, it's such a fucking pain in the ass to, try and transfer stuff and yeah uh, i can't stuff. imagine um so but i wish more people would do it i always say this uh in all my talks i see a million cameras on the all the shows and i don't see anything from those shows uh except you know some of the stuff that i i put out so if anybody's out there that has hidden shit transfer it and let let us yeah you know, the remember. day before the smartphone shows yeah, that's that's funny that you said that because when I saw Jerome's dream, I felt like an old asshole with my phone <laughs> out. But I like, like I've been recording shows for. I started recording shows in '88, so like I'm not gonna stop. I might look like an asshole, but I'm like, that's the way it is. I, I'm gonna do it, and you know. If you're using an old actual camera, some kids might not even know what the hell you're holding. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Do it and use the oldest camera you can find just to freak kids out with phones. Yeah, I, like I said, I still have the Sony camcorder right here that's uh, ready to roll. It, it works uh, perfectly. So maybe maybe I will just to blow people's minds next time I go to the show. <laughs> awesome. Well, right. uh, thanks for talking with me, man. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. And like I said, if, if things get back to normal and you guys – Doing a basement show, hit me up because New Hampshire needs a, a, a daughter's basement show. But we'll call you something else. Maybe we'll call you uh, Dis Placard. Huh? There you go. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can get that band back together too. It could be a dual purpose reunion show. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> All, All right, right man. man. Good talking to you. Uh, stay in touch. Take it easy. All right.